What is up, everybody? In today's insane video, I'm going to be telling y'all how to make a shortwave radio antenna out of stuff you probably have lying around the house. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this. But, before we get into the antenna part of this video, let's talk about about the radio part and what shortwave actually is. Shortwave radio is not AM or FM radio. It is a totally different band, kind of in between the two radio bands, except it's closer to AM than it is to FM. Now, AM radio can go a hundred-ish miles during the day and a few hundred miles at night. And FM radio has a very limited range in comparison to that. FM radio can only go about 50-ish miles, but shortwave radio doesn't have the same range limitations that either of those other radio standards you're used to have. The reason is FM radio is line of sight, which means due to the curvature of the Earth, the signal will stop after a certain distance depending on transmission power and tower height. AM radio can propagate against the upper atmosphere, but it can only do that against the upper atmosphere and not the ground, which means the signal goes up, signal goes back down, and that's it. So, during the day, it can make a hundred miles, and during the night, it might be able to do a few hundred miles, but that's basically it, because it's only propagating one time against the upper ionosphere. But, shortwave can propagate against the ionosphere and the ground, which means it goes along the curvature of the Earth like this, which means it doesn't have any range limitations. You could be listening to a transmitter on literally the exact opposite side of the planet. Now, due to some complicated math stuff, the signal gets exponentially weaker as you go away from the transmitter, which means even though shortwave can be picked up around the world, the signals are are very weak, which means a dipole antenna like this or an interior loop antenna like what you use with AM or FM is just not going to work. What you need is an external antenna. Now, before we start talking about the external antenna, let's talk about the type of radio you can receive shortwave on. Now, shortwave isn't the kind of thing your run-of-the-mill FM AM radio has. You're going to have to find a specific radio. Now, there are some like emergency crank radios that have shortwave and some like super cheap Chineseium radios that also have shortwave, but those kind of suck. There are some other higher ender ones or whatever, but most shortwave radios you're going to find are going to look something like this. Now, the newer ones are going to have a digital display and not a dial like this one. This one is from the 90s, so it has like a dial and a bunch of stuff. Also, this one only does one of the shortwave bands. Shortwave is a very wide frequency range, and this one only does a small fraction of that frequency range, so it ain't ideal, but it is a shortwave radio. But with the radio out of the way, let's talk about the antenna. Now, there are many different, more complicated ways to make a shortwave antenna, but those will all involve coaxial cables and grounding and like bail-in adapters and complicated loop shapes and specifically tuning the antenna to specific frequencies, which 
can be done, but isn't the kind of thing you can do with random crap you have laying around your house. That's where this antenna comes in. This is what's known as a random wire antenna. And it's just as simple as the name suggests. It's a random length of wire that goes from one high place to another high place. Basically, the idea is length doesn't matter here. You're just trying to get as much wire as high in the air as possible to make an antenna. This is a very simple concept and pretty easy to hook up to the radio. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Now let's talk about what wire you want to use for your random wire antenna. You could theoretically use any random wire you find. That's why it's called a random wire antenna. But if you're talking about ideally, ideally you want to have some speaker wire. Now, thickness, like the gauge of the wire, doesn't really matter that much because you're dealing with RF, so it's not like the thickness matters. Also, it doesn't really matter if it's stranded wire or solid core wire. So you could theoretically use bailing wire or something Thing and it would totally work. But speaker wire is ideal because it's thin, which means it's going to be cheaper. It's also relatively common and it's easy to work with because of the plastic sheath and it's pretty easy to bend. So what you want to do is if you're using a speaker wire, you got to pull the two strands of speaker wire apart so you have one wire with double the length. Actually, you'll end up with two wires. What you'll then need to do is take one of the ends of each of the wire, tie them together, and then strip the loose ends and twist those strands together. That should make the speaker wire double the length. So yeah, let's get on with the video. I can't really install an antenna and film it with my GoPro at the same time. So let me deploy this random wire antenna and then I'll talk about it. Okay, here's the antenna setup all set up. As you can see, the wire has been stripped and twisted around the antenna. Here's the junction thing I was talking about. And here's the other side. I just got it on my pool fence right now. Ain't really the best location. This antenna is like five foot, six foot in the air when it really should be like 10, 15, 20 feet in the air for best results. But the higher the better. Right now I only got it like five, six-ish feet off the ground because it's attached to my pool fence. Okay, that's the end of today's video. Now, a lot of y'all might have noticed that I haven't really been making a video in like a month or more. The reason is I had a few video projects that kind of fell through all in a row. Like I had one and then the card got deleted and then I reshot it and that failed and then I made another vid. It's a long story that I don't have time to explain. But also soon we're going on a trip to Florida, which means another long gap in uploading, but also means I'm going to be making another Florida vlog series. However, in this vlog series, we go down to Florida and go to Treasure Island instead of going to Clearwater Beach, Florida. But we also make a stop in Orlando, which is one of the same places I did in my other Florida vlog series. So if you haven't watched my last Florida vlog series, I suggest you check it out. It's on my channel. So if you want to subscribe, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. But if you don't feel like subscribing yet, please feel free to check out another one of my videos that our AI overlords say you will like. And with that out of the way, bye.